Okay, open the door. Okay. You got this. Oh, Santa made a mess in Mommy's house. Santa! Close the front door. <laughs> like so funny. Look, what? What's the audio? <gasps> what is that? What's on the coffee table? Oh, my sofa is yeah. He must have not put them under the Christmas tree because the kitty cats are under there. <laughs> Hello, crime cult. It's Breland here. So today we're going to be talking about the horrible and tragic case of Athena Strand. And I only found out about this case when my mom sent me a link. And this was when Athena was still missing. Then I go on YouTube and I was searching Athena Strand. And I see this live news conference type thing come up. Turns out I was actually watching the live broadcast of the detectives announcing that Athena's body was found. Watching that live coverage in real time, knowing that it was happening in the state right next door to me in Texas, it was just a whole other feeling of devastation for this child. Then they started discussing the circumstances of what happened. Before we get into the full story, make sure you subscribe to become part of our little cult here. Also wanted to let you know I am trying my damnedest to have a new video up every three to four days on this channel. And my upload days are gonna be the same as they were on Glitter Forever 17, Sundays and Thursdays, because those are the most spaced out days. Put on your reminders, your bells, your whistles, whatever the hell they are, because I'm working my ass off and I want you to see it. Also, I have a second channel now, a vlog channel. I don't promote it enough. Make sure you subscribe to it. Everything will be linked in the description below. So I'll also have TikTok and Twitter. Make sure to follow me there and let's get into the video. Athena Presley Monroe Strand was born on May 23rd, 2015 in Duncan, Oklahoma, to her parents Jacob Strand and Maitland Gandy. The beautiful seven-year-old Athena Strand absolutely loved her family. Her mom described her as a daddy's girl. She was super girly, too. She loved anything Disney princess, Barbie dolls, sparkles. She loved doing her nails, her makeup. Animals were her passion, and it seemed as though animals responded to her so well. She loved anything and everything pink. Pink was her favorite color, and her mom even describes her as her little princess. At the time of her disappearance, Athena was staying with her biological father and stepmother in Paradise, Texas, while her mom was back in Oklahoma attending to some medical issues. This was only a temporary arrangement, and Athena was supposed to go back to Oklahoma to live with her mom at the end of December. Although Athena's time in Texas was limited, her dad still made sure to enroll her in Paradise Elementary School in the first grade. She made friends fast and really loved her school. She was an amazing little girl who loved dancing, singing, and all animals. She also loved school and all of her friends in the first grade. Athena also loved flowers, but she was also not afraid to get down in the mud with the boys. Everyone in her family described her as being just like the sweetest little angel, and she was just the perfect child, which is what her mom had said. So now that you know more about who Athena was as a person, let's discuss the day she disappeared. The day she went missing was November the 30th, 2022, at around 6 p.m. in the evening. It was actually a school day, and Athena had recently gotten off the bus. Athena had been living there with her stepmom, Elizabeth Strand, and her father for a good bit of time. And on the evening of November 30th, 2022, Athena and her stepmom had a little 
argument. It wasn't serious at all. I later read that the argument was actually about Athena sorting her dirty laundry. And then after a little bit, Athena just hauled off to her room. It's reported that Athena and her stepsister were sharing a converted shed as a bedroom slash living quarters while her dad was renovating the main home. And you can see the shed in this aerial view. It's right next to the trailer. I mentioned this because this was the last place Athena was seen around 5 45 p.m. that afternoon. So Elizabeth Strand, Athena's stepmom, is in the kitchen which is where the argument occurs. So after the argument, Athena left the kitchen and headed towards her bedroom in the converted shed. Her stepmom assumed that Athena would be going to her room but it seems as though she went outside instead. So for the next 30 minutes, Elizabeth Strand cooks dinner. Her stepmom goes to check on Athena about 30 minutes later in her bedroom. And once she gets to her bedroom, she realizes Athena is gone. Frantically, she starts running around the house, trying to find her, calling her out in the yard. And after about an hour of searching for Athena, she called law enforcement and reported Athena missing. So that night, police actually came out and there was a search. They were looking for Athena everywhere, all over this property. She was nowhere to be found. On December 1st, law enforcement and huge search parties all got together to look for Athena because by this time, the media had alerted the public and everyone was looking for Athena. And unfortunately, they just couldn't find her. Law enforcement were doing their own investigation into who could have possibly abducted her. Was it someone in the family? Was it the stepmom? Because a lot of people are like, ooh, the stepmom did it. This goes to show you that you really don't know until you know. The stepmom was the first one that I thought did it too. But listen to this, police did some digging and they found out that there was a FedEx delivery that came to the house at around 5 p.m. that evening. It's assumed that after this argument with her stepmom, she just went outside to cool off or play or whatever it was. And while she was out there, she came into contact with this FedEx driver. And when I heard about this, I was like, no way. So here's what actually happened. So the FBI was working with the contracting company that delivered the packages for FedEx, which is Tanner Horner's employer. One once they started working with them, they found out that there was a package delivered around the same time that Athena went missing. Investigators were able to determine there was a video available from the truck and they reviewed the footage. The FBI found that the driver had taken this young girl who was visually similar to Athena into the van. The FBI stated that the driver was seen on video talking to her in the van. Once the driver was identified as Tanner Horner, investigators were able to locate him while he was on his delivery route in the Cottondale area on Friday, December the 2nd. According to the affidavit, Horner told them that he had taken Strand and that she was deceased. Authorities stated that Tanner Horner did in fact confess to everything. And the only reason they were able to find Athena is because Tanner confessed and told authorities where he hid her body. Investigators asked Tanner Horner if he'd be willing to direct them to where her body was and he agreed and showed them exactly where they could find her. He directed investigators to County Road 4668 near Boyd, which was about six miles from where she disappeared, and that's where they found her body at the water's edge of the Trinity River crossing. So here's what actually went down. Athena and her stepmom gets into a fight, right? And her stepmom didn't even notice that Athena went outside. As Athena is outside playing, this FedEx driver who is a contracted FedEx driver by the name of Tanner Lynn Horner, who is only 31 years old, 32 years old, something like that. He pulls up next to Athena's house and he delivers this one box. And 
as he's backing the truck out to go down the driveway and finish the rest of his route, he accidentally hits Athena. Once he realizes he just hit a seven-year-old child, he freaks out and he jumps out of his FedEx truck and they say law enforcement confirmed in a statement that they actually have all of this on video from the FedEx truck itself because the FedEx truck has surveillance on it. So he freaks out, he goes to Athena and he picks her up. So he takes her, puts her in his truck and drives away with her inside. He basically kidnaps and abducts Athena. Athena was talking to him. He even asked her what her name was and she said, my name is Athena. She was okay. She could have easily survived this. She wasn't critically injured at all. Once he has her in his truck, he decides and makes this decision that so she doesn't go back home and tell that he had hit her with this truck and FedEx would find out about it, whatever, he's gonna get rid of her. He's gonna silence her forever. So first, he tries to break Athena's neck. He states in his confession that this didn't work. So instead, he strangles Athena with his bare hands. So once he finished strangling Athena and he confirmed that she was gone, he took her body off somewhere and put it on the side of this highway. Recent evidence emerged that there's actually video surveillance of what happened on the interior of this truck. The video shows Athena inside the truck and then Horner talking with her and then ultimately taking her life. The police said that she was gone within 30 minutes. It wouldn't have mattered if they had put out an Amber Alert earlier than what they did because they actually put an Amber Alert out the next day on December 1st instead of the first day she went missing. Police were criticized for not putting out an Amber Alert sooner, but regardless, she was already gone by then. So at this time, law enforcement hasn't said whether or not Tanner Horner essayed Athena Strand. Also wanted to go back to the delivery that this FedEx driver had made to Athena's father's residence. On November 30th, a FedEx delivery man drove onto Athena's father's property to deliver a package of what was supposed to be a Christmas present for our daughter. The package is containing You Can Be Anything Barbies. And this present, ordered out of innocence and love, is one she will never receive. I was supposed to bring Athena back home to Oklahoma after Christmas break. Now instead, Athena will be cremated and she will come home in an urn because I'm not even, I'm not anywhere close to being ready to let my baby go. So currently Tanner Horner is being held on capital unaliving charges. He's in a single person cell being held on $1.5 million bond. He's going to be in prison for the rest of his life. Now the district attorney is seeking the death penalty for Tanner Horner. You may be wondering who Tanner Horner is. Well, I found some things out about him from YouTube and Facebook. I regret to inform you that he's actually a father to a baby. He's also had multiple SA accusations. Not only that, he was an aspiring artist. As you can see from this old video that was on his YouTube channel. From what his YouTube videos showed, it seems as though he lived in a trap house and he reeked of pubic odor. It also says on his Facebook page that he's an Aspie. An Aspie is a nickname for someone with Asperger's syndrome. Some critics out there have blamed Asperger's for him making such a a stupid decision. You can't blame the mental illness. Stupid is stupid. I'm sure Tanner had his moments of being a nice person, but now we see him for who he really is. If I were to give him a title, it would be something along the lines of what maggots feed off of. Ever since Athena's little body was found, there has been an outpouring from the community to support her family. There's been candlelight vigils, memorial services, and recently her funeral. 
Everyone who attends these events wear pink, which was Athena's favorite color to honor her. A custom casket maker here in the United States decided to gift Athena her very own pink custom casket. It was adorned with a princess crown, her beautiful name, and several Viking symbols since Athena and her father would always attend Viking festivals. The interior of the casket is lined with this beautiful gray fur, and it even has track lighting at the bottom. The circumstances are devastating, but if Athena is going to have a casket, she sure as hell is going to have a beautiful one. Athena's funeral was an event to remember. There were hundreds in attendance. Athena also had a private service, which was held at the Hudson and Torres Family Funeral Home, only for close family and friends, on Friday, December the 9th, 2022. So rest in peace to Athena Strand. My condolences to her mom, her dad, her stepmom, her entire family. This hit really hard, and it's a very twisted situation. It's almost like a freak accident yet it's not even an accident. It's a horrible crime that needs to have a better punishment, in my opinion. If we could choose what they should do to him, what would you do to him to make him pay for what he did to Athena? What I would do, my um, suggestion would be something along the lines as having electricity hooked up to his nutsack and just go into town would be my number one goal. Let me know in the comments what you think. Remember to subscribe if you want to become part of this weird channel that I have going here, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and have a holly jolly holiday season. Bye!